Good morning, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Last night in the update, we covered this M5.2, 68 kilometers northwest of Puerto Villamil in Ecuador. This earthquake is, in fact, occurring in the Galapagos Islands. Not directly associated with the fault at the plate boundary, but actually over a volcano. Now, the Galapagos Islands are an isolated set of volcanoes just offshore of South America there. They consist of shield volcanoes, lava plateaus, and they're 1,200 kilometers west of Ecuador. Geologists purport that they are driven by the Galapagos hotspot, and these islands are between 4.2 million and 700,000 years of age. The largest island, Isabela, it consists of six coalesced shield volcanoes each delineated by large summit calderas. You can easily see five here. Espanola, the oldest island down here. In Fernandina, this one is the youngest. All shield volcanoes. The Galapagos Islands are perched on a large lava plateau out here known as the Galapagos, the Galapagos Platform, um, which is leading to the Im immense biodiversity in this area where Charles Darwin visited. Uh, the water is a shallow depth of 360 to 900 meters at the base of the islands, which stretch over 174 miles long in diameter. Since Charles Darwin's famous visit in 1835, over 60 recorded eruptions have occurred on the island from six different volcanoes. Of the 21 emergent volcanoes, 13 are now considered active. Many of these volcanoes um, are grand solar minimum erupting volcanoes. Now, these are shield volcanoes, more similar to the Hawaiian Islands. And we're going to get over the geology of that, but you can see this smear that starts here at what is supposed to be the subduction zone here and moving outward. And typically the way they work, if this is the oldest island and the newest is up here, that this is going to be moving slowly this way over the hot spot where this used to be back here and now this is here. We'll get over that geology quickly, but a 5.2 is not something um, to huff about. This is a large seismic event between two volcanoes. Three. One, the most active, and others that have all been active in recent times. You could see how recently active they've been based on the greenery. This volcano clearly hasn't erupted for some time. It's green. And here we see greening. This one, no green. So... And also clearly volcanic flows this way and this way. These islands are very active and they will be erupting more and they will be erupting soon because here coming from the watchers increased seismic activity and rapid caldera inflation at Sierra Negra. This is happening uh, Christmas time this year, just a few months ago. Increase, increased seismicity and rapid caldera inflation are being observed at Sierra Negra Volcano on Isabela Island, Galapagos. Now that's what this is, uh, that's right in this area here. So here's Sierra, ne uh, Sierra Negra information. The last eruption was in 2005 and it erupted in the uh, Dalton minimum as well as other grand solar minimums. It has an eruptive capacity of VEI-3 confirmed in 1954. And many other of these volcanoes will be erupting at VEI-3 here confirmed in 2005. So they're not more of the dangerous type volcanoes, but 
there's shield volcanoes like Hawaii. They will be adding to stratospheric aerosols because they do have the potential to erupt into the atmosphere and then higher into the stratosphere, which would lock in those stratospheric aerosols, which would uh, drive the albedo effect, cloud development, just like the cosmic rays. Now, Ferdinandina is claimed to be the most active volcano in the Galapagos. And that's right next to this earthquake occurring uh, within the last 24 hours. I will leave you links to all of this information. The Galapagos Islands Conservancy, where you can click on all of the islands and volcanoes and find out their locations um, and some of the statistics and history here. Ferdinandina Island, that's the youngest island in the Galapagos, and the earthquake is centered right here between the main island and the youngest island. And information from the Smithsonian here on the eruptive history, we can then go back and see clearly Dalton minimum and Centennial minimum eruptions. One, two, three, three eruptions in the Dalton, four, five. <laughs> and then two in the centennial. So that's nine eruptions out of ten during solar minimums. So we're going to have a lot of volcanoes on these islands erupting, including Darwin. 1813 confirmed back in the Dalton minimum. So Darwin should awaken as well in the Galapagos. Let's real quick talk about what hot spot Drift is considered geologically. Here's the hot spot. This would be Ferdinandino Island. This would be Isabella Island. And then Espanola would be over here, the oldest island. And as the plate moves over the hot spot, new islands form, similar to the Hawaiian Islands. And to give you a little bit more detail, and here's a two dimensional picture of that same thing we just discussed, where this plate is moving to the right. And the inactive volcanoes eventually get submerged and become submerged seamounts. And the more active volcanoes are directly over the hot spot, as we see in the Hawaiian Islands. This is, unlike the Hawaiian Islands, this isn't a chain of islands. This is a cluster where the oldest is this one down here, over here. And the youngest is this one. But there's also other ages that aren't in line. So it's unlike the Hawaiian Islands, which are usually in a strip. These are all over the place. So a unique geology here, and this particular article is the Galapagos Geology Facts. It's only a page, so take a look at it. And this, I'll leave you this on mantle plumes, which is another explanation of a plate moving over a hot spot. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. The Galapagos Islands will start to erupt sometime shortly in the future here, and we'll have multiple calderas here erupting, similar to the Hawaiian Islands, in uh, just a few years. Maybe sooner than we think. Be safe, everybody.